Hey, welcome to Grafana for Beginners. I'm Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Grafana. So far, we operated Grafana as a single user. Down the road, we may want to have multiple people use Grafana in a shared environment. In that case, managing users and permissions becomes necessary, and that is what we'll be learning about today. To start, log into the admin Grafana account. If you're using Grafana Cloud, this would be the user account you initially created the account with. If you're using the self-managed edition of Grafana, it would be the default account called admin. Regardless of where you're running Grafana, the steps of managing users and permissions are very similar, except for the initial step of creating users. So we'll go over that first, then I'll show you the rest of the steps using the Grafana Cloud interface. All right, let's go over how to create users in Grafana Cloud. When you log into Grafana Cloud, you'll be taken to the Grafana Cloud portal. From there, click on the org settings and click on members. From the members page, click on the add member button, then enter the email of the member you want to invite. Then you can assign a role for this user. You'll see three options. The viewer gets to view all dashboards but can't edit them. The editor can view and edit all dashboards but can't change data sources. The admin can view and edit all dashboards. They could add, remove, and modify data sources. They could also add users and change user roles. There's no need to have a single admin account, so feel free to add multiple administrators as needed. For our example, we'll give this member a viewer role, so click on that then click on the send invite button. You'll see that there's a pending invite for the member you just added. The invited member will receive an email. All they have to do is click on the button to join the group, then choose a password and click on the create my account button. Once they accept the invite, you will see an option to view their user profile and update their role. You could change their role at any time by clicking on that option you could also remove a member by clicking on this icon here. In Grafana Cloud, users are managed in the Grafana Cloud portal. Permission settings for dashboards, however, are managed at the dashboard level. To get to the dashboard, go to the Grafana instance where the dashboard is stored. In our case, our Grafana instance is called Grafana for Beginners, so we'll click on that. When you launch Grafana, it'll take you to the home page of your Grafana instance. Okay, we just added a user to our Grafana Cloud account. Let's go over how you can do the same in the self-managed edition of Grafana. The steps to creating users in the self-managed edition are very similar, except that you start from the home page of your Grafana instance. When you log into the admin Grafana account, you'll see the home page. From there, click on the administration option. From the drop down, click on the users and access option. Then click on the users card. From the users page, click on the new user button. From there, type in the name, email, username, and password of the user you want to add. Then click on the create user button. On this page, you'll be able to edit the user information or delete the user. To assign the role, go to the organization section and click on the change role option and select the role from the drop down, then click on the save button. With self-managed Grafana, there are two things you can do to invite a user. If you want to send an email invite directly from Grafana, you can configure an email server by making changes to Grafana's configuration file or you could send the username and password to the new user outside of the Grafana platform so they can log into your Grafana instance. All right, we just went over how to manage users in both Grafana Cloud and Self-Managed Edition. For both options, we ended on the page of the Grafana instance. Next, we'll learn how to manage permissions. From this point on, we'll go over the steps for Grafana Cloud only, as a process for both options is very similar. Before we get started, let's go over when you may want to manage permissions. So far, we have assigned roles to our users, such as viewer, editor, and admin. Each role comes with default permission that applies to all dashboards in the Grafana instance. This means that if you're assigned the role of an editor, 
you can view and edit all dashboards in your Grafana instance. Depending on your use case, the default permission may not work for you. For example, you may have dashboards with sensitive information that should only be viewed by a select few or you have teams that rely on particular dashboards. If someone were to accidentally make changes to the wrong dashboard, it would impact the work of the team who depends on it. In situations like these, you can manage permissions at the dashboard level. Let's talk about the best practice for managing permissions for dashboards. If you're working with a very small team and have a few dashboards, adding permissions for individuals may be manageable. But let's say you're working with multiple teams and several dashboards, and you're managing permissions with individual users. The chances are a user may change roles or leave the company at some point. When that happens, you may have to check every dashboard to update the permission settings. Now, we don't want to do that. Instead, you can group users into teams and manage permissions with teams. So when changes need to be made, you can update permissions in one place. So let's create a team. From the page of your Grafana instance, expand the menu, then expand the administration option, then users and access, and click on Teams. Click on the new team button, then give your team a descriptive name. We've been monitoring an e-commerce app with a microservices architecture. Let's pretend that we're creating a team of users who monitor the checkout service dashboard. So we'll name the team as such. Now you have the option to assign a role for the team and add email address to create an avatar for the team. We won't do that and we'll just create the new team by clicking on this option. You'll see that the checkout service team has been added and the admin was automatically added as a member. To add additional members, click on this option then click on the Choose drop-down menu, and you'll select the User option. Then you can type or use the drop-down menu to select the user, select the member you want to add. Then you can give the user a member or admin status. We'll assign the member status, then click on the Save button. Using the same page, you can always edit the permission for the team as needed. All right, we just added a member to the checkout service team. Next, we'll manage permissions for the checkout service dashboard. To do so, go to the menu, then click on Dashboards, then select the checkout service dashboard, then click on Settings. From the Settings page, click on the Permissions tab. Let's say we only want the admin and the checkout service team to be able to view and edit this dashboard. To do so, we'll remove the default view and edit permission from the dashboard by clicking on the X buttons here. And we won't make any changes to the admin. Let's add the team as authorized editors of this dashboard. To do so, click on the add a permission button. Click on the choose option. From the drop-down, choose a team option, then click on the Select a Team drop-down to choose a team you want. Then assign the role for the team for this specific dashboard by clicking on the drop-down menu. We'll give this team the edit permission to the checkout dashboard and save it. Okay, so let's look at the dashboards page. This is the page that would be presented to the checkout service team. The same page for non-team members, however, would not show the checkout service dashboard on this page. All right, in this series, we learned the fundamentals of getting started with Grafana. Now it's time to put your knowledge to work by participating in the Grafana for Beginners Challenge. You can apply what you've learned from the series and create anything that would help others get started with Grafana. This could be in the form of a blog, a video, a dashboard, or anything you could think of as long as it can be shared with the community. Feel free to post your contribution to your social channels and tag Grafana Labs. Each quarter, we'll pick one winner who'll get swag and a shout out on their contribution across Grafana's social media platforms. For more details about the challenge and to submit your creation, go to this link. The link is in the info card up top.
Now, if you want to access more episodes of the Grafana for Beginners series, go to the Grafana Community webpage. This is where all the community resources are shared. You can access the series by clicking on the Grafana for Beginners card. Last but not least, the Grafana for Beginners challenge isn't the only way you could contribute to the community. For example, you can share your user story to inspire others. You can report bugs and suggest feedback on our open source projects. You can also participate in the Grafana Champions program to contribute and get celebrated for your accomplishments. For more details, click on the cards under the Contribute and Share section. And that's a wrap. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.